What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about Dr. Stephen Greer and the CE5 Contact app. Uh, we're not affiliated with that, but I think it's super fascinating and I wanted to talk about it. Uh, I'm also going to talk about Enoch and how Enoch ties to the CE5 contact experiments they're doing, uh, and some even say protocol. Uh, if you haven't heard of CE5, then today's going to be an awesome episode as we dig in and learn more about this. CE5 uh, is considered human initiated contact with extraterrestrials. Um, and there's a fantastic documentary just before I get into this. If you want to know more about this, uh, I'm going to be paraphrasing and talking about the documentary that I just watched this weekend called Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind Contact Has Begun. Uh, Dr. Stephen Greer's work is fascinating to me. And I've often wondered uh, what extraterrestrials have to do with our faith, especially biblical faiths uh, and ancient faiths from Babylon to Egypt uh, to the Hindu faiths, Buddhism, uh, all of these different things that we explore. So if, you've, if you're new on the podcast, that's exactly what we talk about. My name is Cub Cooker, and we explore the supernatural through faith, spirituality, and the paranormal through uh, investigating, uh, discussing, researching, uh, and often experiencing through this entire community uh, experiences with all of the above. So we've got some incredible people in this community, people who've experienced extraterrestrial activity or UFOs, people who have experienced angels and spirits and light beings, um, miracles in their life, people like myself who um, have taken this understanding that they've grown up with in different various churches or religious traditions uh, and started to question things and kind of expand our understanding uh, of all of that. Somebody beyond the grave says, I think I saw this in my dream. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a, what I did is a, a vision of one of the grays, uh, kind of the, the archaic imagery uh, that we all have seen in movies and TV. So um, anyway, uh, as I often say, replace the word angel with extraterrestrial and we've got a better understanding of what we're dealing with. So, uh, but as we're going to see today, uh, Dr. Greer's work actually is fascinating. I had been pretty terrified of these things for a while. Uh, and especially after watching documentaries like Skinwalker Ranch, uh, and a lot of ancient aliens, one questions uh, what is going on? One questions, what do these things want? Are they here to take care of the planet? Are they here to, you know, what are they here to do? And one of the things in the CE5 documentary that I just watched, uh, Stephen Greer talks about, they've done thousands of these sessions. Uh, tens of thousands of people have experienced this. Not one person has been injured or hurt. Um, and in fact, a lot of positive things have come out of it. So I have to ask the question. We all know that there are fallen angels from reading Enoch, but also are there not still plenty of angels of light or angels of good? Uh, and I say, yes, there are. So, you know, oftentimes this image is one that kind of evokes, uh, a little bit of fear, a little bit of, um, standoffishness um but oftentimes what we see uh and what these people are experiencing through these ce5 sessions um are different beings of light different um th that look different than this they're not just this gray dull they are again beings of light um beautiful shapes um stuff that i can't explain guys but i definitely think it's important absolutely vital that we talk about it especially with a faith mindset especially uh, as we understand that people in times of old saw these things experienced them um, and how does that fit into an overall faith community again no matter what faith you are uh, this is a multi-faith multi-generational uh, multi-orientation and race community that we have going on here so all different walks of life guys and uh, that's what we're going to get into today. So 
Let's see. Somebody says, uh, I, f- uh, I felt peace and comfort. I saw a lion with wings. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Somebody said, uh, Togolula headhunters. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'm not saying that people haven't had negative experiences with these in different times, but the way that Dr. Greer is approaching it is, is really interesting because it ties in with what I talked about this morning. And so the, the morning podcast on finding your peace and the one I'm doing right now on the CE five contact, they go together because it's all about your intention. It's all about, um, are you coming at this with peace and love and oneness or are you coming at this as, Hey, I want knowledge. Hey, I want, uh, to, to know something so I can wield it over other people or so that I can feel special or whatever. And so why do I bring Enoch into this so much is because Enoch, you know, it was, it says that he was found righteous and that he walked with God and then he was no more. And so he was taken up. He had pure intentions. He wanted to know all of this stuff. He wanted the knowledge. He wanted to meet these beings. He wanted to see the ends of the earth uh, and special things on the earth. And he did. Boy, did he. So we're going to read a little bit from that today. We are in the complete book of Enoch, standard English version, book two, book of the parables, chapter one, the first parable. So he right now um, is with, he says, after I asked the angel of peace who went with me, who showed me everything that is hidden, who are these four presences which I have seen and whose words I have heard and written down? And he said to me, the first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering, and the second who is set over all the dis-ease and all the wounds of the children of men is Raphael. And the third, who is set over all the powers, is Gabriel. And the fourth, who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life, is named Phanuel. P-H-A-N-U-E-L. I bet you've never heard of that one. I know I haven't. We've all heard of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, like, you know, kind of these big archangels. Uh, But I've never heard of Phanuel. Uh, That's a new one for me. These are the four angels of the Lord of Spirits and the four voices I heard in those days. And after that, I saw all the secrets of the heavens and how the kingdom is divided and how the actions of men are weighed in the balance. So this, I think, is really interesting here, how the actions of men. Let me move closer so that I don't flash in and out here. Um, I think I figured out what the uh, green screen flashing was. So it's because I sit too far back. Um the actions of men who are weighed in the balance. And so you can also take that, or I do, to be like the intentions of men. You know, are you going to experience these things that are positive and that are of the light and that are, uh, you know, help you heal emotionally, help you heal uh, this one guy with Dr. Greer? Uh, incredible story about his his hearing was restored after years and he had been Uh, I believe in one of the wars and uh, had lost a lot of hearing because of that. Um, And so uh, highly recommend the documentary, uh, especially if you want to challenge your perception of angels and extraterrestrials. It is a really, really interesting documentary for that. So that's what I talk about today is like, what are angels? What are extraterrestrials? Where's the line in the sand where we say, you know, no, these things aren't real or yes, they are, or yes, they are, but they're not angels. You know, I had this conversation with a family member the other day and really that conversation just boiled down to like, Hey, you know, I don't know, but I certainly know that in the Bible, what's described as angels are not just pretty little beings with, you know, uh, wings and, uh, and white robes and whatnot on. So, Um, anyway, so one must ask what's really going on here. And I think that that's what Dr. Greer, um, and his team are doing. And so if you go to the Apple app store or the Google app store, and I'm not here to tell you to download an app, I'm just want you to know about it because that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to entertain and educate, give you guys the tools, uh, as you decide, Hey, I want to know more. I want to dive deeper, deeper. 
There is a CE5 contact app. It is by Dr. Stephen Greer, G-R-E-E-R, by Serious Technology Advanced Research. It's number 13 in education right now on the Apple App Store. Uh, and it says this app provides instructions and tools to assist you in making peaceful contact with extraterrestrial civilizations, as well as locating others in your area who are interested in making contact. So this is really interesting. He has an equipment list on here. He has recommended readings and he has an audio library with meditations, tones, photos, audio, and videos. Um, why is this important? And, and a lot of people here, especially in uh, more of the tradition communities, because I've come out of a tradition community, specifically a Christian tradition community, um, and the big warning, especially as I was homeschooled growing up, what's up, Annie? How are you doing? The big warning was like, Hey, don't, don't talk to anything. That's not God. Don't, don't call spirits forth. Don't talk to aliens. Don't whatever, you know, guys, we see in the Bible all the time. If we took that advice in Bible times, dude, Mary never would have had an immaculate conception. We wouldn't have had Jesus. We wouldn't have had, uh, how many of the Kings that were moved to uh to move people around to get the israelites to the new promised land like all of these things if we didn't listen to angels and we didn't listen to those experiences but again we're told now like no don't do that only talk to jesus well guys i'm here to tell you i don't i don't talk to jesus i have christ within me and i speak directly with the father and he sends his agents of light his extraterrestrials, his angels, his whatever you want to call it, his spirits to guide me. And you might say, well, no, you just need the Holy Spirit. Well, yeah, the Holy Spirit's a part of it, guys. Uh, I don't pretend to understand the whole Holy Spirit thing. I don't even pretend to understand if the Holy Spirit is still as active as it was back in the time of the apostles, because that was a promise specifically for them at that time. And so we don't really quite understand all of that. And yes, the Bible says test all spirits. And I'm sorry, my nose is itching today. And I'm trying not to sneeze on the microphone. My allergies have been super, super fun today. So um, anyway, Beyond the Grave says exactly. Uh, break out of the nine to five working matrix, get spiritual. Um, amen. You know, I'm totally with you. Uh, peace and comfort, man. Um, and, and that's exactly what I'm here to do is like, we're uniting all of these communities. We have agnostics on here. We have Muslims, Buddhists, Zoroastrians. We have outright atheists on here. We have Christians and evangelicals and Catholics and, and, and many, many more that I don't even know about guys. I mean, we are a quarter million people strong across several different platforms. I'm so thankful to you guys for that. Um, and it's, it's really, really exciting. So again, we're, we're, a an inclusive group and I get thanked all the time for that. Like, Hey, thank you for being so inclusive to everyone. Uh, because that's important. A lot of these spiritual channels and, and faith channels on there, they're not inclusive. You know, it's their way or the highway according to what their version of a text says. And again, as I said on the morning podcast, uh, we're here to look at the Christ as a universal entity, not a certain denominational or a certain faith tradition owned property because he's not monetizable, nor is he a brand, nor is he uh, a certain uh, copyrighted product of any one of these faith traditions. The universal Christ is for all. So uh, the parables of the luminaries were a trip. Absolutely. Uh, Camino preacher. Um, dude. Yeah. And we're, we're getting into some really cool stuff. I've read through book of Enoch, um, several times actually from college. And then now we're kind of rereading it as a community. And as I remember more and more, so, uh, three EM three, six, nine says, thank you for sharing your light. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and then beyond the grave says exactly. We're all raised from different lives. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So who am I to say, you know, one way or another, let me try, Maybe it's TikTok again. I'll try dimming the light there. See if that helps a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, Zell says I'm back. Had to hop on a call real quick. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Um, so as I get into this today, I don't understand what's up with the the, the green screen guys. Uh, it's it's really annoying lately. TikTok, get your stuff together. Come on. As we continue in Enoch here, he says. 
I saw the closed chambers out of which the winds are divided, the chamber of the hail and winds, the chamber of the mist and of the clouds, and the cloud thereof hovers over the earth from the beginning of the world. So really, really, you know, vivid imagery here. And um, as we continue in this, this is one of my favorite parts. He talks about the chambers of the sun and the moon whence they proceed and whither they come their glorious return and how one is superior to the other and their stately orbit and how they do not leave their orbit. They add nothing to their orbit and they take nothing from it and they keep faith with each other in accordance with the oath by which they are bound together. Um, and so, you know, I've always said that that person, you know, you know someone by the fruit, right? Are they in rhythm with the celestial beings? Are they in rhythm with the creations of the earth? And I'm not talking about elemental worships. Uh, I'm talking about, I go outside now and I saw all those rainbows around the sun the other day. They were all over TikTok. All these conspiracies about, oh my gosh, you know. No, guys, it's a rainbow. Come on. It's called a sun dog. We used to see them all the time when I was a kid. And uh, why did I see him when I was a kid and then I didn't see him forever? Because I was awake when I was a kid. And then I fell asleep and I went under the dream of the accuser, the dream of the enemy, the Satan, Ha-Satan, as I talked about earlier on a TikTok today, that there's multiple Satans. So if there's multiple Satans, why are there not multiple Christs? Well, because the church says, well, because the Bible says, well, no, because look, we've talked about uh, Krishna, we've talked about Buddha, we've talked about Christ, we've talked about Horus, we've talked about all of these who are claiming to be the fullness of God and others claim that they're the fullness of God, the full understanding and enlightenment. And look at all the commonality in the stories. Why hasn't Christ come over and over and over? Well, because we don't want to see it. But the more you see it and you look up and you realize, oh, there's a sun dog, there's that rainbow around the sun, and then you remember, hey, I saw that when I was a kid. Or, hey, I had that question when I was a kid. Hey, I saw Jesus in everything when I was a kid. I didn't even call him Jesus. It was just like this love, this like, this peace and understanding and this wonder and everything. And that's a totally different Christ that we're talking about. And he says, my kingdom is not your kingdom and yours is not mine. Why, uh, why would we'll all be taken at once? Uh, I can't walk in your shoes, and yet we think rapture will happen to us at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. We tell most, we tell people most definitely that we have to find our own path. Uh, we can't give it to you. Uh, absolutely, Annie. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's one of the coolest things about this community. Like, we're all on our own path. And if you've been a part of this community for long enough, like, you're here to lead others in love and uh, really open this community up and it's not about you just need to read your bible or you just need jesus or you just need that we don't all just need anything we all just need to keep seeking and we need to do it hand in hand as a community and that's the number one thing we do here and i really really love that about this community so when i bring this up am i telling you guys go out tonight and try to contact the aliens no that's not what i'm telling you but i'm saying be open to these ideas be open to what Dr. Stephen Greer is doing is really, really interesting. And he's got a whole protocol behind it. He approaches it scientifically and spiritually. He approaches it with these meditations and tonalities and frequencies. Um, and, and he always, from what I saw in the documentary, the documentary is called uh, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Contact has begun. The app is called CE5. CE5, like Close Encounters 5 Contact, CE5 Contact, uh, and it's on Apple and Android, but um, I'm going to download it just to kind of play with it and see what it's all about, but uh, again, you know, why have we been warned away from this? Because it's not just the church that's warned us away from this, it's even, what do you hear in the news all the time? Oh, there could be a war, these could be a whatever, we might need to be worried about you know, are we ready for, you know, all of this stuff? You know, what if they're here and they're working on our atmosphere? They're working on our planet. They're here to help enlighten people. They want us to upgrade so that we can commune more with heavenly beings and especially more with 
the Lord of Spirits, as we're reading about in Enoch. What is the Lord of Spirits? El Elyon, God Most High, the Great Creator. He goes by many, many names in many different cultures and traditions. But in all of these, there's that one, and that one is never a physical being. That one is the cosmos. It is this unity. It is the mind of God. It is all things working together in a collective consciousness uh, as a consciousness, by the way. That consciousness can affect us when we actually tap into it, but also we can tap into that consciousness uh, to manifest from that. And I'm trying not to sneeze, guys. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. I sneezed like a thousand times before I started this and then thought I was done. And now I'm trying to sneeze again. So we're ready for that freeze here in West Texas. Right now we still have flowers blooming. So it's been a really weird, um, really weird fall here. We're ready for it. So Annie says golden chariots. Absolutely. The wheel within the wheel. Uh, Bojangles says the coming great deception. I'll try not to sneeze on you, Bo Bojangles. Sorry. Um, uh, but yeah, the, you know, the great deception I think is already here. I think we've been in it for a long time. You know, what's the deception do this, 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 and this, and then this, that's the great deception. Why did Christ say that the path is narrow? Because it takes all of this work. Like it's within the kingdom is within. Well, no, he said that nobody comes to the father except through me. Yeah, because he's speaking esoterically through me. What is he? He's the logos of God, the love, the divine computation, the creative force of God. And if we go through that, then I don't know. I propose, I think, I feel a lot more confident that we're going to have positive experiences doing things like the CE5 contact with David Greer. Again, I'm not telling anybody go out and do it. I'm just saying... For me, I'm having to work through a lot of old programming that tells me, no, these things aren't God. They don't have your best. Why? God's got all of these beings in the universe. What if they want to help? What if they want to enlighten? What if, uh, I don't know, if Enoch had said no to the angel, he wouldn't have seen all of the mysteries of the heavens. He wouldn't have been able to see a vision of the Lord of Spirits with the chosen one standing under the wings. Let me go back to that. This is, you know, you've got Christ talked about in book of Enoch. He's called the elect one. He says, and in that place, mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and faith. And I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord's Lord of spirits. And so, you know, boom, there it is. We've got Jesus. We've got Christ. We have Horus. We have, excuse me, Krishna. I'm sorry, guys. I am. My allergies are making me really, really sick today. I've been struggling with that a lot. You know, the more I do this, the more I push into this work. I got like allergies and I've had headaches and just all this stuff. And, you know, is it spiritual warfare? Is it, you know, frequencies? Is it the matrix fluctuating at me? You know, I don't know. But man, it's been it's been a rough, rough week. And then today, uh, you know, I've been sitting here working on other stuff and I was fine. And then I get ready to do this. Uh, so it doesn't come without its price. You know, that's what I'm saying, guys. Like this thing that I'm doing, I had to make an agreement with God that I was ready and I was ready to give up whatever I needed to, to step into this truth. Uh, somebody says, I feel you. Yeah, absolutely. It's weird guys. It's weird. Uh, what's been going on. It's ragweed. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably it, man. Um, Richie Rich says, um, but yeah, uh, the ragweed here has been really, really bad. So that's probably what it is. Good, good point. Maybe it's time for one of those Claritins. So, um, but anyway, yeah, these are the four angels of the Lord's of spirit. And so that's, that's what these guys are. You know, we're hearing about these archangels here, but again, you know, if, if Enoch had said, no, you know, my tradition tells me not that I only need to go, th you know, guys, come on, like, We've got to have an open mind about this. We've got to think bigger about it. And we've got to have a deeper heart about it. Like your heart is a well. And if you fill it with truth and love, like it just continues to expand and pour forth that living water that Christ was talking about. Uh, what is the app called? I mentioned it's called CE5, Cat Echo 5 Contact, CE5 Contact. Uh, really, really cool. Like it, it even has an equipment list on it and everything. Super, super excited to check it out. Um, 
it's got really good ratings on it. And, you know, Dr. Greer is really, really fascinating. So here's a little bit about Dr. Greer. Maybe one of these days we'll have him on the podcast. I've had people reach out to me this week um, with other podcasts asking me to be on theirs. So I'm going to start asking people to be on ours uh, and try to bring some more stuff out here. You never know. Somebody like uh, Dr. Greer, if he likes what we're doing over here, he might want to jump on and share some knowledge here. I, I heard him on Patrick Bet David this morning, um, which is just cool because I watched the documentary and then I, I saw that. And so lots of, uh, you know, on that Valuetainment channel. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to that, but um, some good stuff, good stuff. So Greer founded the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrials or SESETI, C-S-E-T-I, in 1990 to create diplomatic and research-based initiative to contact extraterrestrial civilizations. The group defines CE5 or close encounters of the fifth, fifth kind as human initiated contact and communication with extraterrestrial life. Now, again, before I go forward, this sounds really creepy, but watch the documentary. It's anything but. I mean, they're literally praying and meditating. They're holding hands. They're holding positive intention. Um, they are using high, uh, high frequency, positive tones and stuff. Uh, and then these things manifest up in the air and, and make different patterns and they've caught them on camera and film. They've caught all kinds of different data points. He does it very scientifically, but also with the spiritual aspect. Why have we struggled with these scientifically? Because we don't add the spiritual aspect. Why have we studied with them spiritually and nobody wants to listen? Because when you only speak spiritual terms, a lot of people are like, oh, you're just full of woo-woo. So I love what Dr. Greer is doing because I've got this analytical thing going on, yet I'm super creative and very spiritual. So I, I like what he's doing because it's kind of this combination of both. And you can see the benefits of it and you can see why they're doing this uh, because you know they're basically over here uh, proving or trying to prove that, you know, hey, these things don't hold malicious intent you know if they did we probably wouldn't be here i mean they're like way more advanced than we are and then uh one of the things talked about in the documentary is like uh any sufficiently advanced form of technology appears as magic and so why would like back in bible times when someone sees an angel and they go that's an angel of the lord uh, why wouldn't they go oh that's technology oh that's a wheel inside a wheel oh that's a chariot of uh, fire, but it's actually a technological device. Like why, why would they not understand that? Well, because they had never seen, you got to think we've got this iPhone and movies and everything. And so we see all this stuff that, um, that kind of gives us a reference point for what this is. Do I think we really understand what these are? No. I mean, they're technological, but they're also spiritual and metaphysical too. And I think the reason that we're not like flying these things around the sky right now is because it takes a whole different level of conscious enlightenment to even begin to understand how to use these things. Uh, where do the Anunnaki come into play? Great question. Anunnaki, big part of the Sumerian culture. Uh, you've got Enlil and Inki. Uh, Inki being uh, the Satan. Uh, Enlil being uh, God, being El, the God Enlil was actually originally Elil, Elil. Um, and so, and then Christ is also tied to Enlil. Um, if you look at those, it's not like the exact story, but it's really, really, really similar. It's like you've got these two brothers and then they're kind of warring for the world. Uh, lots of different uh, things ensue around that. We're actually going to read a lot of the Sumerian tablets soon. I want to. I really want to try to get through Enoch as quick as possible. I'd like to get through it by, uh, by the holidays at least, so we can kind of start some fresh material. But um, my Rainbow Child uh, ASD calls them ships. Substance seven 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 says, uh, "Dude, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, uh, ships. I love that idea. I love that idea." Uh, what's the vocabulary they had at the time to explain what they were seeing? Uh, that is the vocabulary they had at the time. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we understand more technology now, but again, we're disassociated, disconnected from the spiritual aspect because we've taken spiritual things from archaic and ancient times. And we have tried to put religiosity or churchianity on them or doctrinal, whatever on them. 
uh, or we just replace it with technology and say, well, these are just technological and here's the schematic, here's how they work. And guys, it's like a blending of all of that. And it's, you know, what does the higher consciousness say? It says, and not, or, and so, you know, I think that that's for me, this is exciting research that Dr. Greer is doing because he's taken science. He's taken what I love sci-fi, right? You know, um, he's taken that and he's combining that with the spirituality and, uh, specifically spiritualities that are based on, uh, Christ consciousness, unity consciousness, uh, the law of love, things like that, which I think are very, very biblical. And so again, I'm not telling anyone to go do this, but I had to bring this to you guys. I had to, because it was really inspiring to me. It made me really think, are they contacting angels? Are they having these experiences just like, uh, people in Bible times were having. And I'm going to read a few scriptures here right out of the Bible. So, uh, Let's see, uh, da, 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 da. here's a crazy idea. Could spaceships be organic in any way? Absolutely, absolutely, soul year. Um, I definitely think that they could be, um, you know, technology, you know, we, we are biological technology if you think about it because our brain is, I explained this earlier this morning about consciousness. If you haven't listened to uh, Finding Your Inner Peace podcast from this morning, check it out. But I talked about our brain is like this iPhone, um, and then the uh, the Wi-Fi that that this w- iPhone picks up is like our consciousness because our consciousness is not just us. We're actually picking up from a field around us, and there's been a lot of studies done on cosmic consciousness. I shared this earlier from Cambridge School Cambridge Scholars dot com cosmic consciousness in human excellence implications for global ethics and it, this is a great paper you can go read the whole thing on this website cosmo consciousness or cosmic consciousness is a term used to characterize a transcendence of the limits of self-consciousness as an ultra state of illumination of the mind the roots of the conception are embodied in the quest for spiritual connection with multi-dimensional cosmos and again, you've got these scholarly papers coming out about all of this stuff. And we're just starting to really re-understand. I think we're entering not the age of information, but the age of enlightenment. And I think that there's been people studying this for years. It's it's coming public now. And some of these theories that we have are starting to become a little bit more commonplace. So, um, uh, Somebody says, what's up, man? Like the Enoch stuff. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Somebody said C E R N or Shiva. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and understand too, when you look at Shiva, Shiva might be the destroyer, but there's also a different side to Shiva. And so I think of Shiva as an angel. Um, I think of Shiva as Apollyon. So that would be the, the Greek equivalent. And so when we say apocalypse, that's an unveiling, not just a destruction. It's an unveiling. And so when you have that Shiva energy, that's what's really interesting about the angel or the god Shiva uh, is, yes, there's that destructive element, but it's also a recreation element and an unveiling that 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 peels away the falsehood of things and reveals the true nature, Uh, you know, because our true nature as humans uh, is not just to go around and conquer and exploit people and do all of the horrible, sinful things that humanity has done. And we've all, you know, uh, anybody who has gone through the whole church system understands the idea of trying to, uh, you know, walk away from your sin, walk away from your flesh, step into new life, all of that stuff. But there's really a point when all of that actually just happens to you rather than you trying to make it happen. And for me, it was last year. For me, it was uh, 2020 or 20, yeah, 2020 and 21 were my year of ascension and stepping into uh, a new person, really, like really, you know, that I could start to see things I didn't before. I joined the Christ consciousness for real, um, and I'm starting now to explore what does peace really look like? What does it look like for me and you? And I think uh, what Dr. Greer is doing and the experiences these people are having, go watch that documentary, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, 
contact has begun. It is on uh, Amazon Prime, I believe, is where I watched it. Super, super cool stuff, guys. Just mind expanding. And I, I had that thought while they're doing this. I'm like, dude, they're talking to angels. This is so cool. You know, people say, well, why don't angels come down anymore? Why doesn't God come in? Why, where, guys, they're still here. But we've just been lying to ourselves over and over and over about what these things are. And as humanity moves through its cycles, our understanding changes, but our consciousness should expand. And when both of those happen, then we end up in a much different place. Uh, Bible is just stories of a time we forgot. Well, that's very true. That is very true. True. The angel Shiva that will open the bottomless pit is a fallen angel. I can definitely see that. You know, we know there's fallen angels. I don't know the names of all of them. I mean, we're given some of the names of them in, in Enoch, but I don't understand, you know, the whole mythology behind that because Enoch is, uh, just like the Bible has so many indiscrepancies in it where, you're like, well, wait, I thought you just said that. Well, I thought you just said that. And it's like, so you kind of have to question. Uh, but again, yeah, I think, yeah, there's definitely fallen angels and there's definitely still angels here that are angels of light that want to help people, that want to love on people and want to do the will of their father. So um, let's see. I don't know. Still trying to find myself. Spent most of my life in addiction. Been clean four years. Uh, Steven says, Dude, welcome. You know, I struggled. I talked this morning. My struggle with alcohol started when I was about 15 years old. Um, and I just, you know, I almost lost my life to it. It, it got so bad. Um, and then, you know, I've been sober now for six years, I think, seven years, somewhere in there. Um, and I don't really count the days so much as I just don't have a taste for it anymore. And so that's what I was talking about, about being caught up, being raptured. When I said I was raptured in 2020 is like all, a lot of those things just kind of fled from me. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm perfect, but it does mean that like, finally that, that taste for alcohol left me, you know, I don't want it when I smell it or see it. It's not something I desire. Uh, I can drink a little bit of wine now or something without, drinking a whole bottle or two or three like I used to, you know, so it's, um, I'm a much different person about that now. Um, and I can definitely put it in its place rather than it putting me in my place. So it's a whole different thing. So, uh, somebody says I have videos that can change our lives. Good for you. I hope you're posting them all over the internet. Then that's what I'm trying to do. So, uh, every insult spirit here is a fallen angel reincarnate uh of a higher divine essence i can see that uh for sure you know i had a guy on the podcast a while back truth seeker um awesome awesome guy he talked about us being fallen stars wandering from our first estate and that we're all in essence uh have nephilim in us you know that we're all uh hybrided in this flesh i can see that too especially when we talk about genesis 1 uh, in Genesis two, Genesis two being where the maker God, Yahweh fashioned us out of clay, uh, that could certainly be taken as an allegory for the fallen angels in Enoch. Cause you got to remember these timelines do not lay out perfectly guys. I mean, you, we've got historians that have tried to make all this work and back and forth and a mythology is a mythology for a reason. It's myth, but it's also mythos mythos, meaning it has that essence of truth in it. Somewhere along the way, there are fallen angels or gods, and they took their people. They took their portion. Yahweh took his portion. Um, and you have other gods that took their portions. And I think these are extraterrestrials or angels, sons of God. And then you got Christ coming and saying, hey, I'm giving you the right to be sons of God, by the way, and you will judge angels. So, you know, mind-blowing there, right? Uh, some of us still carry the seed of David, uh, world project says, um, let's see, uh, in, yeah, exactly. In stars has the essence of truth. Absolutely. Uh, so even when I read my Bible, I'm not that guy that's like, this is the end all be all infallible because guys, I got 20 different Bibles and every one of them I read, I guarantee you they're not infallible. 
because none of them say the same thing. You got to go back to the root words of it. And even when you do that, it's still up for debate. So you cannot call something, in my opinion, and in my world, I can't call that infallible because the interpretation of that is going to be different no matter where you look. And why do I think the word of God is infallible? Because I think the word of God is in us. It's that thing in us that wants to do right no matter what. It's that thing in us that wants to create rather than destroy. It's that thing in us that wants to find love and selflessness and service to our neighbor and fellow man over service to ourselves. That is the logos of God. That is what the word of God means. And I talk about that a lot on here. Which Bible should I start with? So my mom and I had this conversation the other day, um, and I really, we we had some trouble getting a Names of God Bible for her because there's some companies out there now that are putting King James Bibles out under the name Names of God Bible, and it's just the artwork on the front. They put all the names of God, and it's not actually the translation. So I like the Names of God translation. I read that online, but I have yet to find a good hard copy of that. So I really like the interlinear Greek, Hebrew, English Bible. It's going to have all three of them on a page. It's it's smaller, so put your reading glasses on. But you'll be able to look up, oh, what's the Greek word? When it says, you know, the word of God is living and pr- pure, you know, and you're like, oh, that means the Bible. Oh, wait, no, let's look at the Greek over here. Oh, the Greek is logos. Oh, what's the logos? The divine expression or computation. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I thought it meant the Bible. Well, no, it's actually talking about that spirit. It's it's a spirit. It's an entity. It's a uh, a vibration, if you will, a frequency. And so it's a whole different ball game when you get a Bible like that and start doing the work. I talked this morning about doing the work, and that's what we're doing. We just had our fiftieth episode. Thank you, Father. Uh, super excited about that. And this is episode fifty-one. Here we go. So. Um, I hope you guys enjoy and, uh, I hope you guys go check out the CE five app, check out the doctor, the doctor, the documentary with Dr. David Greer. There's a mouthful. Uh, Dr. Stephen M. Greer is actually his name. Sorry, not David. Um, but the documentary is, uh, close encounters of the fifth kind. Super, super awesome documentary. Go check it out. Guys have an open mind. Uh, angels are still here. UFOs are still here. Uh, are they one in the same? Quite possibly. Uh, are our night skies filled with lights more than we want to admit? Absolutely. Uh, I can't tell you guys, but I know that um, my Savior, my Ascended Master, Christ, who is, I believe, come many different timelines and many different cultures and spit many different truths out on those streets, still does now. Um, I think he's universal and I think that, uh, those that are in him can discern these things and discern, uh, what's in their best interest and in the collective good and what's not. So we're told to discern all spirits. Um, Hebrews 13, two says, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. And then you get Acts 8, 2. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go to the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And then Hebrews 1, 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? Acts five nineteen. But during the night an angel of the Lord opened up the prison doors and brought them out and said, Then Jude 1, 9, But when the archangel Michael contended with the devil and was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all his ways. Psalm 91, 11. Revelation, then I was fell down at at feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, there's a clue there, guys, too. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Sorry, my dog laid on my foot, and that hurt. 
Um, let's see, but I will, uh, God, there's a ton, a ton of angel verses here. I mean, we could go through this all day. I love this one. Hebrews one, seven, here's your UFO verse. You want to know what they look like? Hebrews one, seven of the angels. He says he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. See, there you go. Marvell. She's shaking her head over here. She's got allergies too. We all do. So, guys, it's all there. I mean, you know, we can argue about it all day long, but I think when we start hybriding these understandings together, we get a bigger picture, a bigger consciousness of what's going on. Um, and thank you guys for your support. If you like the artwork, this is a brand new shirt we just dropped. This is the Christ Consciousness shirt. Uh, I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. You guys asked for more affordable shirts. We were doing the premium all over print, but those are like 70 bucks just to – just to print them, do them, you know, and then it was shipping too. Uh, and so they're more expensive. They're beautiful. And you guys really have enjoyed those. And I've gotten a lot of compliments on those. But I wanted, you know, if you guys want to buy a shirt every drop I do, I wanted to make sure we had like the $30 shirts available. So these are nice screen printed, high quality cotton shirts. I did this one in a beautiful royal purple. I love purple. I've got one uh, on order for me. Uh, and this is just a contemplative Christ. To me, this can be your Christ, your Yeshua, your Buddha, your Krishna, your whatever you want it to be, your your ascended master. Because this is what we're all looking to become, right? Isn't that the whole point? I mean, he didn't come just to make followers so that we had a bunch of institutions with his name on it. No, like he came to enlighten and to ascend and to join our conscious together, consciousness together. So I love this shirt. I hope you guys do check it out. Uh, it, like I said, it directly supports what we're doing here on this channel. But um, I've been working on some artwork too. These are some Cosmic Christ images I've been working on. Some cool stuff. So I've been doing a lot of new, new artwork uh, as we tell stories. That's what I do here on this channel. I try to tell stories, entertain, educate, uh, and really just lead us all into a bigger understanding of what all this is. Cause I have questions. You have questions. We all have questions. I'm going to go take an allergy pill right now. So, um, before I sneeze my head off here, I don't know why it just started when I sat down, but anyway, I love you guys. I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Somebody said, uh, what did te Jesus teach though? I can't talk lately guys. When my allergies start acting up. It just makes my whole mouth not work. Uh, not work on time. So, um, but you know, Jesus taught the kingdom of, of God is within you. If thine eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord, your God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your soul. Why all your mind? Because your mind is your consciousness and you got to love God with that. You step into that frequency with that. Local honey substance seven, seven, seven says, yes, good idea. I'll go try that. I'll go try that. I've got some. So, um, Annie says, I need to talk with you. It's time. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Annie. Um, and Annie, we are starting a group, uh, meeting and I haven't set the parameters on that. I'm working on setting it all up. We're going to meet once a week on zoom with this group. Uh, this group is going to be super affordable. It's going to be between nine and $19 a month. I haven't set the final price on that yet. I've got to run all the numbers, decide how many we can allow in and all of that stuff. Um, uh, we're going to have a free prayer line cause you know, nobody's praying, paying for prayers around here, but the group definitely is something once a week, we'll be able to meet on zoom and just talk together and do the work together. That's what I want to do. Like I get to talk here and answer some questions, but we want a group where we can really sit down. Somebody can say, Hey, here's what, here's what's going on in my life. We can actually look up verses. We can talk through it. We can do the work together as a group and really elevate our consciousness together as a group. And he says, Oh yes. Awesome. So, so I'm going to be launching that soon. We are going to do a free one of those. I'll have the sign up for that just so everybody can get a taste of it. We can kind of test everything before we launch a paid version of it. Uh, but we're going to do a free one later in October here. So, uh, look for that. It's coming very soon. 74 Leathercraft. What's up, brother? Jacob's here. 
I uh, said, yes, awesome community. Thank you, Jacob, for being here. Y'all go check out 74 Leathercraft right here on TikTok. He's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Good, good friend of mine, uh, and he is a faith creator, guys. Like He, he makes beautiful leatherworked wallets. Um, if you like my necklace and my bracelet, this is all 74 Leathercraft leather uh, that he, he hooked me up with. So he sources really high quality leather. He's doing a drop soon, I believe for his wallets and he's working on a line of t-shirts and stuff like that too. So go support him, give him a follow. I really appreciate it. Uh, because as I build, we build our community here. I'm also building a network of creators and friends on here. Uh, I've had several people on the show and people have been asking me to be on theirs. So We've got a cool community building, and I'm really pumped, guys. So thank you all. Y'all have a beautiful day. I'm going to go do something uh, in the sunlight, hopefully. So I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. God bless you. Check out the CE5 app. Go support me at www.cubcooker.me, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.